Hello everyone, I'm filmmaker and author John Borowski and I'd like to talk to everyone today about the process of how I produce my books and it's not just the process of the books but it's also scheduling my projects because people seem to be a little confused about how projects are scheduled and how some projects take precedence over other projects. So I wanted to explain that and show you a little bit about the making of the Pan's Ram book and all the work, the meticulous work that goes into these books when I actually produce them. So here we go. So the process of scheduling films and books for production is based on numerous factors. Um, some projects take precedence over others at certain times, even though all projects will be completed. So it's hard to determine the factors um, of what would cause a certain project to take precedence over another, but these things happen with indie projects and also with Hollywood projects as well. So for instance, I was working on a book on Carl Panzram called Panzram at Leavenworth. And while I was working on that, the opportunity to produce a documentary on John Wayne Gacy came about. So, and in the midst of making the film of the John Wayne Gacy murders, I also came across archival materials, which I published into a book about John Wayne Gacy. So that took precedence. So now's the time to return to Panzram, and I wanted to um, just let everyone to know, rest assured, that I'm still working on all of my projects and they will be completed. So this is just to give you, again, a little idea. You know, Hollywood does this all the time. Certain projects are pushed back. Others come to the forefront due to numerous factors. For instance, I'm working on the John Wayne Gacy film, which is most likely going to be turned into a miniseries because of all the material I have. So it's going to take a little bit longer to do that miniseries, but I'm still working on a film version to get something out while we're under this coronavirus lockdown. So I know everyone's chomping at the bit, and I know everyone is anxious, and I know several people have mentioned, hey, you know, whatever happened to your Panzram book? Why is Gacy taking precedence? Well, that's business. These things happen. So I just wanted to let everyone know that I'm working on the book and I wanted to give you a little insight into the process as well. So I wanted to give you guys a look at the book cover. So this is the cover for the book Pan's Ram at Leavenworth. What's interesting about this cover is it includes on the left Carl Pan's Ram's first mugshot and on the right is Panzram's last mugshot. So I kind of combine them into one. And this book really focuses on Panzram's time at Leavenworth. There's a little bit about meeting Henry Lesser prior to when we get into the Leavenworth segment of the book, but the majority of it is Panzram's time at Leavenworth. What's interesting about Panzram's case and the book that was initially released about Panzram was that book, the majority of the book was, the majority of the Leavenworth section of the book was based on Robert Stroud's writing on Carl Panzram because the writers of the book at the time did not have access to the federal files. So that's why I'm releasing this book because there isn't enough information about Panzram's time at Leavenworth. You know, there was some information in my film, Carl Panzram, The Spirit of Hatred and Vengeance. There was some information, so I'm taking that information plus more and putting it into a book to release so people could enjoy Panzram's story of hatred. All right. So again, here's the book cover, and I'm going to take you through the process of how I create my books. So I create my books in the program InDesign, which is an Adobe program. So this screen, what you're looking at here, this is my InDesign screen, and you're looking at the only letter that survived of which Henry, letter, Henry Lesser 
wrote to Karl Panzram. There are many existing letters of Karl Panzram's when he wrote to Henry Lesser, but this is the only one in existence that I know of that is still remaining of any of which Henry Lesser had sent to Karl Panzram. So the first step in my process is I lay out the book. So the main thing is telling the story. So I have all these case files and documents and I have to tell a story. The documents, of course, are all out of order. I have to figure out what story that I want to tell. Usually it is chronological, but sometimes within the book there are other things that might pop up. So again, it's usually chronological. But let's take a look at this InDesign file. So when I started the book, the first process is the story and the layout. So this is pretty much laid out already. So what I'm doing now is I'm meticulously cleaning up these documents and photos, which are actually in the InDesign program already. It's a tedious process, but it's meticulous and it's necessary. So what you're looking at here is this letter, but this wouldn't translate well to a black and white interior of a book. So there are several things I have to do to this document, and I'll show you what we're working with here. So this is the InDesign screen, and when I need to work on these files, we open them up in Photoshop. So here we have Photoshop. Actually, that's not the right one. There we go. I have two pages. So this is the first page. So the first step is taking a color image and making it grayscale. You know, over time, the paper may have been yellowed or that was the original color. And sometimes when this happens, of course, you're looking at this and the contrast is off. It looks awful. So what I have to do is work with the contrast. So you've got to kind of take out that gray background. You know, sometimes it's walking a very careful line because you see there is a watermark in the background, but for my purposes, as long as people could read the document, that's the main thing. So once we've done that, clean that up, then we go back to InDesign, which updates the document. So here it is cleaned up, but it has to be positioned within the margins. For Amazon's Kindle Direct, they're pretty particular about margins. And where everything falls within the pages of the book. So I usually try to get as much of the image. See, I like that writing at the bottom down there. So what I do is play around with this. Everyone has their own ways that they work with apps and programs, and this is the way I work with mine. It works for me, and that's all that matters. You know, they're small. They might be needed to uh, rotate. 
So it's all about cleaning these documents up to make them readable. Uh, I mean, I love this letter. You know, I mean, especially at the end here where Henry Lesser says affectionately, you know, he really did care for Carl Panzram. You know, that friendship is one of the most amazing friendships in history. The James Woods film does not do it justice. So, let's see. All right, well, I think that's the best I'm going to get as far as fitting everything within the frame there. So the next thing we have to do is just crop this bottom a little bit so I can put the page number in there. But sometimes I actually have the documents cover the page numbers if the document, it fills the whole page and it's important enough because there doesn't have to be a page number on every single page necessarily. So that's all the work. It's a lot of work, but I have to do this for, you know, sometimes 300 pages. So, and then there's also text that I have to format. So there's a lot of this text, which I haven't formatted either. So that's another step of it. So I have to format all this text, which still has to be done. So right now I'm around page 198, but I still have to go back and insert more pages. So a lot of work has been done, but there's still a lot of work to do. So I wanted to kind of scroll through it and show you guys really quickly what's in the document as well. So if we go all the way to the front of the book, there's some letters from Panzram here, Panzram Leavenworth. I'm still working on this stuff. As you have advertisements, some photos, and then I give a little brief history of how Panzram came to be at Leavenworth, his relationship with Henry Lesser, how that happened. This is one of my favorite pieces. I'm going to create a reproduction of this Carl Panzram's identification card from Sing Sing Prison. It's just phenomenal. I just love these mug shots and cards. This was after he was on his yacht, which he bought after stealing funds from former President Taft's house. And he's wearing this tuxedo. And a lot of this is Henry Lesser talking about his friendship with Carl Panzram. Of course, I had to put this photo from the um, Saturday Evening Post in there. A lot of newspaper excerpts. And then we get into the Leavenworth section which is when Panzram finally arrived at Leavenworth. There's some photographs of Leavenworth. There's a ton of information on this book. It's most likely going to be between 275 and 300 pages. The murder of Warnke, the laundry foreman, a lot of Carl Panzram's writings. So as I did with my Albert Fish book, on one side will be Carl Panzram's writings. Actually, his writing is not as difficult to read as Albert Fish's or some of these other serial killers that I've read their writings and transcribed their writings. And on the right here, I actually type it out. So it's a little bit easier to read for people, but you actually get the original document so you can see what it looks like as well. And yeah, so I'm almost there, halfway there. But then even though it looks like this is pretty much done, I have to go back. House of Whispering Hate, excerpts from that. This is pretty interesting. There, I have excerpts from the Leavenworth Times, which was the Leavenworth newspaper, when they talked about the incident with Panzram when he murdered the laundry form in Warnke. One of the main reasons I'm putting this book out is to hopefully clarify why Panzram did murder Warnke and the actual incidents. So again, I search for the truth. I'm like a detective. Same thing. My ultimate search is for the ultimate truth. And there was one Panzram book that was put out many, many years ago that isn't entirely accurate. 
We've got Robert Stroud's writings on Pan's Ram, which is very interesting. So again, working on all of, this is what his original handwritten papers look like. You could see these at, if you go to the San Diego State University site, the majority or all of Pan's Ram's papers are actually digitized on that. So you could see the actual handwritten paper. San Diego State University is the world's largest repository of Carl Pan's Ram. Um, writings. So uh, Joel Goodman donated all of his collection. I donated much of my collection. And then Mark Gatto, who appeared in my Panzram film, was going to write a book on Panzram. He donated his materials to San Diego State University as well. So that's just kind of a little bit of an update on the process of what goes into not only the production of books, but the timelines and the schedules and, you know, especially being an indie filmmaker, many times these schedules shift, they change, certain projects take precedence. That's just the way it is, you know. So I just wanted to let everyone know kind of how that works out. So all my products are being worked on. I know everyone's anxious. You love my work. You want to see more of it. You're on lockdown. Nothing to do. Believe me, I get it. So I'm working on it, and you're going to have more of my works out there. My films are going to be distributed to further territories as well, so keep an eye on that. And as always, check out my website, johnborowski.com, or my store, store.johnborowski.com. My show on Get Vocal every Thursday night at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. And I also do a Facebook Live show every Saturday at 2 p.m. Central Standard Time because I'm coming to you from the great compound of waterfront productions in Chicago, Illinois. Chicago is the home of gangsters, serial killers, and corrupt politicians. Don't forget that. Till next time, thanks for watching.